Who owns the patent on this vaccine? Well, the, the people, I, I would say, there is no patent. This is... Could you patent the sun? <laughs> Jonas Suck, inventor of the vaccine that eradicated the polio virus in the United States, viewed his contribution to the fight against the disease as the property of the people, not something that should be patented. This gives us a glimpse into the man who led the way in scientific innovation and left a legacy that lives on today in the fight against disease and sickness across the world. On April 12, 1955, America celebrated after hearing that a polio vaccine was found. Poliomyelitis, or polio as it is commonly known, was a crippling and sometimes deadly virus that attacked the nervous system. Polio affected mainly young children, causing many to suffer through weakness of the muscles, severe fevers and headaches, and partial paralysis. Breathing could become difficult and without proper medical attention, the virus could result in permanent paralysis or worse, prove to be fatal. People were so scared of polio because they didn't know how it was spread and they didn't know what to do to protect their children. And I remember my dad telling me that children weren't allowed to go swimming because they thought maybe swimming pools was where you got it. Fortunately, the hero of the day in 1955 was Dr. Jonas Salk, the man who developed a vaccine that would change the world and launch a revolution in the scientific community. On October 28, 1914, in New York City, Jonas Salk was born to Russian Jewish immigrants Daniel and Dora Salk. As a young child, he was interested in life science and bugs. He was a quiet and sensitive boy that observed the world around him. Although his parents were not well educated, working long days in the textile industry, they recognized the extreme intelligence that Jonas possessed. His parents supported Jonas as he advanced through school very quickly. At the age of 15, he graduated from Townsend Harris High School and headed off to the City College of New York. Jonas was intent on becoming a lawyer. His mother once argued with him, how will you win a court case if you can't win an argument with me? Jonas took some science classes in law school and heeding the advice of his mother, decided to change course and enter medical school. While in medical school, Jonas discovered a passion for chemistry and working in a laboratory environment. A professor offered him a position in his research lab and Jonas gladly accepted. In his final year of college, he met another individual that would be influential in his career, Dr. Thomas Francis, a virologist and a microbiologist who studied influenza at the New York University School of Medicine. Dr. Francis would later direct Jonas's polio research. Following graduation in 1939, the new Dr. Jonas Salk interned at Mount Sinai Hospital diagnosing patients for two years, spending any free time he could find in the lab. In 1947, a few years after the completion of his internship, Dr. Sock applied for a lab assignment in California, but was rejected. When the University of Pittsburgh heard Dr. Sock was looking for a lab, they offered one in a small, cramped basement of the campus hospital. Even with small space, barely any staff, and no money, he accepted, and started to turn his focus towards finding the cure for polio. The March of Dimes played a very large role in Dr. Salk's research. Founded by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was afflicted by polio himself, the March of Dimes raised money through fundraisers. Funds raised were used to treat polio patients, as well as research to finding a cure. It was those funds that got Dr. Salk started. The National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis paid the University of Pittsburgh to create a state-of-the-art laboratory on one condition. Dr. Salk had to first identify the different types of polio. Dr. Salk got to work and gathered samples from human polio patients and injected the polio virus into monkeys, testing the animal tissues to identify the types of polio. Dr. Salk and his team identified 196 strains of polio that fit into three different categories of the virus, subclinical, non-paralytic, and paralytic. Dr. Salk proceeded to develop a vaccine that would work in humans, with the intention of eradicating the virus completely. Dr. Salk approached the creation of the virus in a very unconventional way. He developed a vaccine using an inactive or killed strain of the polio virus. Using an inactive virus proved effective in the fight against influenza, 
but was a method the scientific community had never seriously considered in the fight against polio. Many thought he would fail. And that's what they said. You couldn't immunize against polio with a kill virus vaccine. Second phase, they say, well, if it's true, it's not very important. And the third stage is, well, we've known it all along. In 1951, upon completion of his findings, Dr. Salk attended the International Polio Conference in Denmark. Also in attendance was Dr. Albert Sabin, an American biochemistry researcher. Dr. Sabin presented his findings for a polio vaccine as well. While Dr. Salk had developed a vaccine with a killed virus that was delivered by injection, Dr. Sabin's vaccine was live and to be delivered orally. At the time, live vaccines were considered to be more efficient, but with risks that could evolve into a full-blown sickness. He turned out to be right. A lot of people made fun of him for that because that wasn't the normal way that vaccines were developed when he was doing this. And his main com uh, person that was trying to develop a vaccine at the same time, Dr. Sabin, made fun of him and said that um, he did, was just doing kitchen sink science. Dr. Salk was so confident that he had created the best defense against polio that he and his family were among the first people to receive the new polio vaccine. His controlled field trials of the vaccine involved an unprecedented 1.8 million children in 44 states. After a year of checking on the results of the field trials, on April 12, 1955, Dr. Salk's bold and unprecedented approach was announced to be safe and effective in the fight against infection from the polio virus. The news was enthusiastically welcomed by those in the medical community and around the world. An historic victory over a dread disease is dramatically unfolded at the University of Michigan. Here, scientists usher in a new medical age with the monumental reports that prove the Salk vaccine against crippling polio to be a sensational success. By 1961, the number of new cases of people with polio had dropped by 97%. Dr. Salk and his team had led the way toward eradication of the polio virus and proved that using an inactive virus was an effective way to fight off infection, revolutionizing how scientists would develop vaccines. Dr. Salk remained humble, showing the true mark of leadership by acknowledging those that helped make the vaccine possible. While the contribution of some well, it may seem greater than that of others in one way or another. This gigantic experiment is symbolic of the equally great foundations, both scientific and philanthropic, without which it could not have been conceived or executed. In 1960, in partnership with the March of Dimes, Jonas Salk founded the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in La Jolla, California. The Salk Institute became known as the best biological research facility adding to the legacy of Jonas Salk and his belief that each person was responsible for making a difference in the world. Salk Institute has attracted some of the best scientists in the world. Over 900 faculty and staff continue to work in molecular biology, genetics, the neurosciences, and plant biology. And a lot of the different scientists that he um, enlisted to work there have, have gone on to become, to receive Nobel Prizes, and to do really important research in a lot of different areas. The work of Dr. Salk continues today. Research is going on now at the Salk Institute to find cures for cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and many other diseases. Dr. Salk's legacy is rooted in how he felt that the polio vaccine belonged to the people, and that it was the people that needed to come together to find the cure. It is believed that Dr. Salk could have profited more than $7 billion had he patented the vaccine. Salk chose not to patent the vaccine so that it would be cheaper to make and more available to people all over the world. My father also wanted to bring people together from a variety of disciplines to focus on those problems confronting humanity that can't be solved in the laboratory. Dr. Jonas Salk's leadership was reflected in his ability to keep an open mind, to bring people together, and his confidence to develop a new and unique way to prevent a disease that had the world terrified. His legacy remains in that it was his interest to keep scientific research about the people and how to make the lives of all humanity better. Not wanting to profit from discovery, but to help all of mankind. <laughs>